I got this tank at Home Depot. It's 200 gallons. And I liked it because it's kind of hourglass shaped. So in my mind, we'll have a bigger area for the sand. Bio sand filter on the top and it'll funnel down to the bottom. And that's the outlet down there. So I put some, it's called a tough tank, but it doesn't impress me as being all that tough. It's actually kind of flimsy. Um, so I put a layer of sand on the bottom before I start adding my rocks because I don't want any of my rocks to like poke a hole in the bottom of the tank. I got the big stone in and I just finished with the medium stone. And all I've been doing is we just had this stone delivered two weeks ago and spread it out. I just take a shovel full like this. And I take the hose. And I rinse it. And then dump it in. So the next step is the medium or semi-medium in these bags. I started on the fourth layer of stone, the final uh, fine stone before the activated charcoal goes in. This is activated charcoal that I got off of Amazon and it was like, uh, it's like $110 for a five gallon bucket. There's all kinds of videos online about how to make your own activated charcoal, but it all seem pretty complicated, like building your own your own kiln to activate it in. And yeah, this is uh, meant for fish tanks. So it should work well. Here's the charcoal, and another layer of fly screen, which ends up being, I'm out of fly screen, it ends up being three inches short, but such is life. This is our final layer of stone, the fine stone. So it's coarse stone. Um, medium stone, medium, medium stone, fine stone, fly screen, charcoal, fly screen, fine stone. And from here, we fill it with sand. And I wish I would have got a bigger tank because we're not going to have a lot of sand in here. About a foot and a half. Hopefully that's enough. Now I've got my coarse sand in the tank. I'm not sure. I'm guessing like 18 inches of coarse sand. And now I will add the fine sand. There's a bag of the fine sand. Okay, that went all over me. I thought I could do this one-handed, but I can't. I connected the outlet of the sand filter to this blue tank. Now the height of this pipe will be approximately the same height as the water level in the sand filter. I never want the water to drain out of the sand filter because I don't want to lose my bio action 
of the sand. So the sand can't go dry. So that's why this pipe is approximately the level of the water level. Now this tank serves basically one purpose and that's to break the siphon because this whole setup is above the storage tanks. I don't want to siphon the water out of the sand filter. So the blue tank is gonna act as a siphon break. In other words, it's not a direct connection between the sand filter and the storage tank down below. The water has to go into this tank first. And then from this tank, the blue tank, it'll fill the storage tank. So hopefully that makes sense. There's one more thing I need to do to the sand filter, and that's to add a clean out. So I'm gonna do that next. So I guess you call this, I think it's called a bulkhead connector. It's for tanks. Again, got it off of Amazon. And that's approximately the same height as the sand. And the idea is occasionally the sand will get clogged and you'll have to stir it up and drain off the accumulation. So that's what that's gonna be for. And it came with a plug. So all I have to do is unplug it. <laughs> Thank you for getting rid of the cat. But did you have to chew through the rope? <laughs> They're your helpers. <laughs> Dumb and dumber. Now we're training the dog not to chase the baby goats. So, so far, so good. As we're waiting for the glue to dry, I opened this trench up between the two tanks, the tote tank and the sand filter. And we begin here with the rain gutter emptying into the tote tank. There is a nylon screen at the top of the tote tank. There's a screen on top of each intake to prevent debris and I also added this screen particle screen to keep particles from going into the sand filter valve this is a telescopic union really cool pretty much what it sounds like it goes up and down so if the pipe expands or contracts, you don't have to be real precise when you put everything together because you've got a little bit of flexibility there. And then I have one over here as well before it goes into the sand filter. Do you want to take the top off the sand filter? Me? And we'll, yeah, the whole thing? we'll open up. Yeah, just take the whole top off. We'll open the valve. There's the tote tank valve. And then there's this valve.
I took the float valve off and it runs freely. It just seems like, I don't know, it, it takes pressure to get past the float valve or something. So I'm gonna figure that out. But it's filling up. See this? It's a rust stain from where the water ran out. It's a lot of rust. It's bad. Had a major fail with the sand filter. The rocks that I used, I just gathered them up around, are full of iron. Uh, I didn't notice it, but yeah, it's like pretty much iron ore so now when the water goes through the sand filter the last thing it hits are the rocks which pick up the water picks up the iron and it tastes like iron so I just dumped four containers a CLR in here I figured the rocks are up to about this level and left the rocks soak and CLR so we'll see if that kind of like cleaned up the rocks a little bit and kind of dissolved the iron, at least off the surface of the rocks. Um, so I'm gonna flush it out and we'll give it a taste, see how it is. I also bought a whole house iron filter cartridge. So anything left behind, hopefully will get picked up by that. The alternative is to completely empty the tank dig out all the sand down to the bottom and take the rocks out put different rocks in and i just i can't face that yeah okay ready so this is the second sand filter the first one was a bust because it was full of iron ore i guess so we went to Home Depot and got non-iron ore rocks. So we're filling it back up again with uh, the new rocks. We're framing up for two pads. There's going to be a pad here. We still got to do the framing here. What is it, like 8 o'clock? And then we're... We're down below where the collection system is. So there'll be a 2,000 gallon tank here, and a 2,000 gallon tank here. And I gotta get all this framed up, and we're gonna dig eight holes down in for support. And we'll do that after the framing. Just to give you a different perspective, so we're on the side of this hill. I had a backhoe make this clearing, this little pad. And we're digging down a little over two feet with that rented post hole digger. And it's a beast. And that Caribbean sun is just beating down on me. We got four holes made and I was spent. It goes really fast, but just the physical aspect of holding on to that thing, because, yeah, and then lifting it up out of the hole. Aye. So we got four done, four to go. We had rain yesterday, pretty good rain. I bet it was an inch. And our holes filled with water. Now, we did need the rain really bad, so I'm grateful for that. But that's a total mud hole down there. I mean, it's just all mud. So, I built this chute to carry the cement down. 
and I'm waiting for the cement people to come out and to tell me if it's gonna work. Because I can't get a cement mixer down there and did the calculations. I could just buy bags and mix it up down there, but it would be over a hundred bags of sacrete. I would much prefer just to get a cement mixer in here and get it all over once and once and for all. We also are gonna put a stone base down. And just to demonstrate, So if nothing else, I can use it to get my stone down. Don't go down there. And the two babies just slid down this chute. Decided to jump on and slide down. So I might have caught him at the end, but I missed it. <laughs> I'm throwing a bag of sacrete in the bottom of each hole. Which we just spent a couple hours cleaning out the mud. What I ended up doing is actually taking soil, putting it in the hole, letting it absorb the water and then digging it all out again. It's quite the ordeal, but I don't know if you can see this or not. So we take a bag of sacrete, throw it in the bottom, and then we take one of these tubes and level it up inside. And then we put, and then we put stone around. So these are gonna act as like, what's the word? Pylons? Oh, not really pylons. These are going to add some stability to the slab. The moment of truth. This Harry, he's helping us out today. Caribbean sun and bang, it's all done. Bueno. Pretty happy with it. Oh, this one shoot, it almost buckled. I, I thought I thought we were had. A big heavy clump came down all at once. Instead of just flowing down, he mixed it up real dry. And it, um, it, it came so close to buckling, I, I was holding my breath, but it didn't. It would have been tragic. So next up is our tanks. This is the finished setup. A couple of side notes. Everything is gravity fed down to the tanks. Then we have a shallow well pump. It pumps it up from the tanks through a particle filter, a micron, a five micron filter, and through a carbon filter before it hits the RV. The other thing I wanted to say is there's a lot of YouTubers out there who are collecting rainwater 
and putting it right into their tanks. And then they filter it after the fact. I didn't want to do that. We have screens and a sand filter to filter the water so it's as clean as I can get it before it goes into the tanks. So I'm storing clean water and not nasty water. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next project.